linear function y equal mf plus b, m is your slope. Now, another way of saying slope is the average rate of change. Average rate of change. It's just another way of saying slope, that's all. And you, in calculus, you're gonna learn some different uh, term too, but, but it means the same thing. B is your y-intercept. When, when x is zero, it's a beach. Let's take a look at the example. Uh, for this section today, if we're gonna go through a lot of application problems. This is, because most of you guys are business people. Um, so this class is dedicated to business students as opposed to math students. Erosion of the middle class. The idea of a large stable middle class, um, if I, if somebody, if a household making um, between 39,000, 219,000 for a family of three is a Central America sense of itself. It's a backbone of society. The following table gives the percentage of middle income adult in the United States from 1971 through 2011. It looks like it's going down, but it's shrinking. So the function is the linear function f of x equal negative 2.5 t plus 61.2. t is between zero and four. So basically they let t equal one on year 1971. I'm sorry, t equals zero on year 1971. Here t equal one, t equal two, t equal three, and t equal four for 2011. That's why the constraint t between zero and four. Oh, you're not gonna copy the whole thing, are you? Okay, uh, it's a long problem. Just copy the function, how's that function? Um, all right, let's plot some point. Let's plot some point. 1971, that's t equals zero. Um, that's my y-axis. My x-axis, you're gonna label your x and y-axis as well. T in here. And the y-axis is the percentage. So t equals zero is 61%. Maybe I should have do um, scale to your stick. One, two, three, four, five, sixty. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So at t equals zero, the percentage is 61%. So say roughly here, t equal to one, uh, 59, one, two, three, four, zero. So 59 right here. And t equal to 50, 56, 59 right here. Two is 56. Mm -hmm. Three is 54, 451. Hang on, hang on. 56. That's not six. 59. 56. And then 54, 51. All right, good enough. <laughs> good enough. How come it doesn't let me uh, use a ruler? There we go.
Right, that's my linear. That's my function. It's the same, you, you can, if you can see the negative slope, it's going down, right? It's going down. <clears throat> it's not important. But you kind of just want to take a look at the picture. What is the rate of change of the percentage of middle income in US, in US over the period of uh, 1971 through 2011? So let me rewrite the function here for you. Um, I have y equal negative 2.5t plus 61.2, where t between zero and four. So what is the rate of change here? What they're asking for? Slope, right? So that means they're asking for the slope, m equal negative 2.5. I don't want to see t here. People just sometimes people just include like the the variable here, m equal negative two point five equal to t. Um, they want slope. It's just m. So do not include the variable. Now, if you want to interpret this, what is what is what does this mean in in term of the context? It means what? Remember, the slope is what? Change in y over change in x, right? So, so it looks like the middle, the middle income, the percent of the middle income is declining, decreasing 2.5% per year, right? For every year. So that's, that's, that's what in English means. This is how math write it. So maybe I'll, I'll use blue. So if you, I ask you if you interpret it, interpret it, interpreting, interpretation, interpretation. You would say um, the percentage of middle income in US from 1971 through 1981, you're gonna be specific. <laughs> what it went and when um, is decrease 2.5% for each year or per year, whatever, or every year, however you want to run it. <clears throat> so far, so good. Assume the trend continues, what will be percentage of middle income adult in US be in 2011? So what should I plug in for T? Five, right, five. So uh, 2011, 2021, I'm sorry, 2021. 2021, the T equal five, another decade. So, so that means you're gonna plug in f of five into the function. It's five times five plus sixty one point two. Let me see. Forty-eight point seven percent. So it's reduced to forty-eight point seven percent. Scary. I don't know about you. It's scary. Um, let me show you how the decimal work. Let me show you the model in decimals. Mm So that's my function. That's my function. Um, as f of five, you see that's um, I don't I don't want forty eight point seven. What we have right uh, now. What if the middle? I want to know 
when the middle class disappear? The middle class disappear when what? Yeah, it is it's when the function hit the x axis, right? There's no middle class, no percentage, zero percentage. So that's when the that's when the x intercept. So the x intercept is happened at um, 24.48 years. So I'm sorry, decades. So roughly 250 years uh, from um, 1971, there's no middle class if the trends keep going, which I don't think is going to happen because <laughs> I don't, I don't, I couldn't. I couldn't imagine how U.S. just be without middle class. You be no you and no me. <laughs> so hopefully, just maybe it's just true for the period of uh, period, a short period of time, but not you know in the future. <clears throat> Let's try the example. Linear depreciation of a network server. A network server has an original value of 10,000 and is to be depreciated linearly over five years. So we know that it's a linear model with 3,000 scrap values. Find an expression given the book value at the n year of t. So this is a function of time again. Function of time. Uh, hmm. So let me write this. I'm going to highlight this. I want to know what's f of t equal mx plus b. I kind of figured out what is m and what is b. Do we have the y in the set? Oh, or rather mt, sorry, mt habit, which is n, right? That's when t is zero, original value. So I know y equal MT plus 10,000. One down, one more to go. Can I figure it out my slope? Can I figure it out my slope? Mm -hmm. Using what? <clears throat> so what's five and what 30,000 represent? Yeah, it's a point, right? It's the solution of your function, right? It's a point on the function, on the graph of the function. So all you do is just plug it in, right? Because if the solution, then it must be true. So plug it in. Um, so five comma three thousand. Five comma three thousand. Y is three thousand equal m. T is plus 10,000, 3,000 equal 5n plus 10,000, uh, subtract 10,000 both sides, 5m is 7,000, negative 7,000 rather, m equal <clears throat> negative 1400, which is makes sense, right? It's depreciating. So you should have a negative slope. Y equal negative 1400 T plus 10,000. Does anyone have class later? Yes. Uh, so on the exam, do you want us to write it out with my equals and how you did? Or yes, yes. If, yes, yeah, just, just write just as much as many work as you like. So mm -hmm. what, which answer would you prefer for the negative 1400 equal to M or Y equals negative 1400? Oh, but, but no, my, my final answer is my final answer is this, right? The the one I box, right? Yeah. This is um yes. Yeah. 
I'll tell, I'll tell you what you I was gonna have, I'll tell you, we have short lecture today, so I'll tell you about the quiz and the exams. Um, I don't remember. I gotta take it, that's why I'm about to bring it up. Yeah, give me one second. All right, let's do this one and then we'll talk about the quiz. Let's do this one. Linear cost revenue and profit function. For this class, um, the cost function we know capital C of X. So that's the cost function. And the revenue function is um, capital R of X. Revenue function. And the profit function will be cost minus revenue, revenue minus cost, right? So the R of X minus C of X. Um, once you make, you take the, whatever income, subtract the cost, you got the profit. All right, let's let, uh, take a look at this one. Profit function for Puritron water filters. Puritron, a manufacturer of water filters. I think we did this last time, kind of. Has a monthly fixed cost of 20,000, a production cost of $20 per unit and a selling price of $30 per unit. Find the cost function, revenue function and profit function. Um, why don't you guys try that first? I'll give you like a minute to try it out. What thing one thing at a time, but don't don't think multiple stuff at a time or harder for you to think. <clears throat> Sorry. 
Someone tell me what is the cost function? Very good, right? 20x plus 20,000. 20,000 is a fixed cost plus the variable cost, which is $20 per filter. Someone else, um, revenue function. Yeah, 30, right? you sell for 30 units, that's it, 30x. Nice. 30x. And then the profit will be uh, subtract between the two, V R of X, subtract C of X. That's you. So 30X minus, <clears throat> what minus? Um, 20x plus 20,000. So 10x minus 20,000. That's your actual credit. And then after this, we'll talk about the quiz. Huh? Oh, how's it really? Yeah, I <clears throat> So that people from home can see what we're doing. I just did it on my phone. Two point five. Right. I did it on my phone. <laughs> How I gotta take a look at it. Oh, sorry. I have different online. 
Let me click on it. On my phone, I should answer it and it gives me the right answer. Um, okay, I just did. Uh, oh, okay. All right, on my phone, it does not like this. It's not like this. It's weird. Oh, okay. Sorry, Sophia. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, on my on my phone, I answer it and it's look. I don't know. You can see. <laughs> There's no. This is weird. I have no idea. Uh, no, don't do anything. I'll tell you what to do. Don't do anything. Did you already did it? <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, but follow follow whatever you see on it. Okay. I have two versions. I have no idea why. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, follow, follow on the direction on the inside the quiz. Right, let's talk about the, um, the quiz. I should have just leave it like that. So share. Let's talk about the quiz. Mm -hmm. So you have quiz, when the quiz? Monday. Okay, quiz it's Monday next week. There will be four little questions on the quiz. Um, let me take a look. So four questions on the quiz. <clears throat> You should be able to know how to factor. So your number one would be factor factorization problem. So write down. You know. Number one is factoring. Number two is going to be evaluating. So I give you two function, um, a composite function. How's that? Number two will be evaluating composite function. So what we did last time, what we did last time. Number three will be finding the domain of a combined function. Lecture before last. And then number four will be performing the operation. Performing operation. Say that would be lecture. And the last one would be lecture. <clears throat> I think this lecture 1.4. <clears throat> People from home, can you see my screen? What is that? Yeah, whatever I said is what we cover up to today. You said finding the domain of what for the quiz? A combined function. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let me tell you what to study. How about this? How about this? Number one, number one will be your first lecture. Um, factoring 1.3, number one, that's section 1.3. Okay. And then the section 1.4, that's number four. Number four. <laughs> we'll just write them down. It doesn't matter what question is it. It's gonna be on it. Uh, one point three, one point four. Uh, 
<laughs> um, yeah. I can't remember. 2.4. Yes, number two, uh, composite, focus, focus on the composite. So 2.4, focus on the composite objective. <laughs> what would I say? Um, <laughs> I, 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 got, I got factor, I got um, composite, I got rational, domain, the domain, the domain, yeah, the domain. That will be. Uh, let, let me double check. Okay, I got double check. I don't remember. And then two point three will be focused on combined function. So something like this, either something like number six or number seven. I'll send out email. How's that? <laughs> so, so I'll send out email. I'll send out email. <laughs> You are not supposed to tell you on the quiz, right? I said I email. Composite function? What about it? It could be, it doesn't matter. Composite function means a function inside a function. That's different than rational. Huh? So the quiz is here. All right, um, two, so, so the exam is on the same week. Um, which is a good thing, so, you, so because it's gonna be similar. This is, so you don't wanna study two, twice. Right? Um, now for February 1st, you're gonna have a review day. I suggest you print out your practice exam. I post it on Moodle. Everything's on Moodle. You supposed to print it out, do it at home. You have questions, bring it up to the class, okay? And I'll, I'll go over it again. Um, let me tell you what to study on the exam. I want you to, in addition to doing your homework, of course, I want you to print out the practice exam here. Don't, don't look at the solution yet. So try to do it yourself, see how much you got. Print this out, do it. There's a solution up there for you. On the practice, on the final practice, I, I can't read it. I feel bad, it's so long, the final practice. Um, see how long it is? <laughs> yeah, on the final practice, I want you to do from prop example one up to example 17. If you have time, because that's cover exam one. Yeah, up to 2.7. So from beginning to, to 2.7, that's exam one. So from example one to example 17, that's cover exam one. So that's additional review, all right? Solution also available there too. Um, I hate it when it I, when I come back, it doesn't make me go all the way back again. Here, look, I have review solution for here. So everything's there. I would suggest you start now, right? Just just every day you do a couple of problems, right? So you don't feel overwhelming. Okay. Is there any question? Of course, I'll send out email, tell you what to do. I'm just saying in class, just to give you a heads up. But I would suggest you try out the final review as well. Okay, so when the final comes, you, you don't, you just kind of redo it so it's faster for you, right? Because there's a lot of problems here. Yes. How many questions should we expect for our uh, exam? Um, 10 okay. plus one bonus. Okay. Unless you don't want to do bonus. But I'll put it there. Anybody want to do bonus? That's five points. Okay. Yeah. No more than 10. Trust me, I don't want to grade more than 10 either. Uh, so yeah, 10 is good. Is that fair, 10 question? Any, any other question? People from home? Huh? Yeah. Chat, I'm going to chat. 
I think old stuff. Old stuff. So maybe, uh, yeah, yeah. Sadia, is there? Sadia, are you asking for the quiz? Or the so, so I'm if for the quiz, the domain, yes. I give you a function and you tell me what the domain of the function is, okay? <clears throat> Oh, we're not done yet. I still have a. Um... Sorry. All right. So, for in a section of a straight line, let me do this one. It's similar to the one on your quiz. Um, when two graphs intersect each other, they have the same height, right? They have the same y. So that means you're going to set them equal. So that means x plus 1 equal negative 2x plus 4. doesn't show, I don't know why. Maybe it won't usually <laughs> want to miss the class. Uh, come on. Add two x both sides, so I got three x equal subtract one, so equal three x equal one. Now I want a point, not a coordinate. Right, this is just one of the coordinates. So I to figure out why you plug x equal one into one of the functions above. I pick the left one because it looks simpler. So y equal one plus one, which is two. So one comma two. <clears throat> of course, I can make it a little bit more complicated like the one you see in your huge, your actual credit. Uh, I can make it quadratic. On the exam, if I make it quadratic, um, it guarantees that you can factor. Okay, so you don't have to use quadratic form. <clears throat> Last one, and then we'll call it a day. Break even level. The reason I show you intersection point is we, when two functions intersect each other, they have the same value, the right, same high value. Um, in business, we call that break even, break even point. Right, that's where the cost and the revenue is equal. So you're not making any profit nor losing any money. Okay. Prescott manufacture its pro products at a cost of four dollar per unit and sell them for ten dollar per unit. If the firm's fixed cost, a uh, fixed cost is twelve thousand per month, determine the firm break even point. So the break even point, so let me highlight it here, is when cost equal revenue. So that means C of X equal R of X. So first let's figure out what is e of, uh, C of X. So C of X is, um, so the fixed cost is 12,000, right? And then the variable cost will be Four dollar per unit to produce, so four x plus twelve thousand, and then your revenue is. They sell you sell them ten dollar per unit, so ten x together break even is you set c of x equal r of x, so four x plus twelve thousand equal 10x, 6x equal 12,000, divide both side by six, x is 2,000. 2, what is the unit? Well, units, right? Could be x units, so 2,000 units. 
They didn't say filter or anything. Let's just say users. <clears throat> so if the company produced 2,000 units, that would be break even point. If they produce more, they probably make profit. If they produce less, they probably could have lose money. <clears throat> what is the loss sustained by the firm if only 1,500 units are produced? You plug it in. Let you plug it in. <clears throat> If only 15 units, so let's see what's the cost for 15, 1,500 units. So see, let's see. Um, see, uh, 1,500 is four times is equal to 18,000. 18, so that's the cost, 18,000. And then the revenue, see how much they make if they produce 1,500 uh, units. 10 times 1,500, that's 15,000. So they lose 3,000. <clears throat> Loss gonna be, 1800, I'm sorry, 18,000 minus 15,000. <clears throat> Yay, we finished. So again, let me recap. Um, I'm going to send out the email, tell you what to study on the quiz. Let's take care of the quiz first and then we'll talk about the exam later. All right, have a good one. Be careful out there. Stay safe. And I'll see you again on Wednesday, one way or another. Bye, Zoomer. Thank you. Thank you. See you.